All right, guys, this isn't going to be very long today. This was something that, because I gave you guys that assignment yesterday with creating those strip circuits, I just want to go over the answer of the strip circuits and just to make sure that you guys are able to identify each one. You know, yesterday I, I showed you these loads, one, two, three, four, five loads. The one load that we did not say is a load is the control board, right? Yeah, true. The control board has power. It is a load and a control, right? Um, and I posted the video on this lecture uh, just uh, yesterday, and someone questioned, is the thermistor a control? And in a way or indirectly, it is a control, but a control is like that float switch. When that's open, the water valve don't work. Power can't get to it. When it's closed, the water valve will work. It controls it by turning it on and off. Now, what a thermistor does, and we can talk about this one or the one inside the sensor. What a thermistor does is the thermistor is telling the board what the temperature is. And then if it's too hot, the element or whatever shuts off. Okay? But the thermistor doesn't turn off the heating element. The thermistor tells the board what the temperature is, and then the board makes a decision mm -hmm. to turn that off. So the board is the control, control board, what we call them. <laughs> the thermistor is more like a load, and I explained that that circuit for the thermistor from P310 to P39 here, that's a low voltage circuit. Thermistors usually run about five volts DC. And that voltage going through the thermistor is what the board is doing. It's sending that small voltage through there and it's measuring how fast it's flowing through there like an amperage draw and it converts that into a temperature, okay? So it measures the resistance. Your board is almost like a multimeter because when you have a digital multimeter and you're checking the resistance or even an analog, when you're checking the resistance of a part, you put your two meter leads there, the battery of your meter is sending a current through that resistor and that measurement of the current is telling it the resistance value. So the thermistor is basically like a heater. It's a resistor and it changes value. You know when, you're, when your heater is on and you measure or, or off, when you measure the resistance of your heater, you're going to get, let's say, 30 ohms. When it gets hot, is it still 30 ohms when current's flowing through it and it's hot? Heat creates resistance. Okay, so the heater actually changes the resistance value when it's running. Well, that's the same thing a thermistor does. But just the difference is we're using the heater to produce heat, and we're using a thermistor to measure what the temperature is, whether it's hot or cold or whatever. Okay, so yesterday we talked about the circuit for the dispenser. We've already done that one, so let's go on to the next one, the water valve and a float switch. And I'll go ahead and draw it. I was gonna ask you guys to come up, but I don't wanna like uh, make this a long lecture, so I'll go ahead and draw it from here. So where do we start on this diagram? For what? L1. For, for our circuit, L1. Mm -hmm. So that's always gonna be our starting point for our electrical circuit. Mm -hmm. Our ending point is what? No Neutral. And I'm going to draw a, a triangle like it's, it's coming in here and it's going out there. In order for any part to work, okay, any load to work, let me just be more specific as load, it has to have electrical current flowing to it. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean that every part has to have current flowing through it, not just electricity to it? Yeah, so, well, here, watch. If I come in here, and we're going to do the water valve, and the voltage is here, but this switch is broken, would the water valve work? No. But why? I have voltage. This part of the circuit's good. The control board closed. Send power here. The door, this door switch is closed. So line one is there. If I touch that wire, I'm going to get shocked but you don't have the neutral to complete the circuit. 
Okay, but not having the neutral does what to the circuit? It can't, it can't move. Really? We don't have current flow. Right. It's almost like a traffic accident on the freeway where they have a fatal accident. Now the cops block off the whole entire road. Nobody can get through. And once the cars stop moving on the road, that's it. Nothing's getting done. You're just sitting there. And the same thing here. Now, when you look at an outlet in a wall, the electricity is in that outlet. You got an outlet like this here. There's always 120 volts in that outlet, but it's not doing anything. And we know it's there, but it's not current flow. So when we talk about voltage, you're going to hear something called electrical pressure. Ele voltage is electrical pressure. Think about a hose on a wall. Before you turn the valve on, there's water here, right? Mm -hmm. It's under pressure too, right? Mm -hmm. We say we got 40... PSI, which is about what an average household pr water pressure is. But it's not moving. That's electricity, the same thing. When we have it in an outlet, we have 120 volts here, but the electrical current's not flowing. There's pressure. This is line one here, the small one, and the big one would be neutral. It, it wouldn't normally be that, that big. Let's just make it like that. There you go. So, um, Line one's here, but once I connect the light bulb, it goes through the bulb and comes back here. So it's going this way and then it comes back that way. So we need to have a complete circuit. And it doesn't matter which side of the circuit we break. Like this is the neutral side. As long as the circuit is broken anywhere for that part, it's not going to run. So when we're troubleshooting an electri electrical circuit, one of the things we want to look for is the part itself bad, like the water valve could be bad, mm -hmm. but if the water valve is not bad, then something in our electrical circuit has to be broken so the current can't be flowing through it. The current flow, of the water valve is like a water wheel. I could have water here, but if it don't move, the wheel don't turn. It's once I have the water flowing through, then the wheel turns. What if I put another valve here and, and, and close this valve? The water comes from here, goes here. This might turn and then stop once the pressure gets to here and then there's no more flow. So this is like the neutral switch and this is like the line one switch that they all have to be there in order for that wheel to turn. Mm -hmm. And that's what is going on here with your electrical circuit. So you guys understand that as far as the circuit? Okay, so let's go to the actual circuit. We go line one through the door switch to the board. We're gonna add what, a relay? Mm -hmm. We could actually put a little coil there like that because a relay is two parts, right? a magnetic coil and a switch and when I put power to the magnetic coil it closes the switch that's mounted on the board and those two parts are inside this relay they're inside of here these two terminals are the switch the magnetic coil is inside of there but it's soldered to the board over here and the control boards, when the control board wants that switch to close, you have a little chip on here, right here, like your processing chip, and then you got some other chips, what are called ROM chips, which are like the actual program that the manufacturer puts in your board. That chip talks to this chip, this chip sends voltage to the magnetic coil, and the switch closes and tells it to come out. So, you don't ever see this on the diagram. You may see the switch, and they may call it a relay, but you have to know that the board has to control that relay. So this one comes in here, goes here, goes through the float switch in the water valve, and goes back out here. So how should your diagram look? We should always start off with L1 and neutral. 
always have that in our diagram. And line one goes to what first according to this? Door switch. Door switch. Door switch. Black wire. Door switch. And then from there it goes to what? To the P. It goes to P1, right? So let me uh, make it a little bit smaller so I got room to write this. So I'm going to put a box here and put P1, right? And then I'm going to put that relay. I'm just going to put RY for relay. Now here's one thing that confuses people when they're looking at the diagram. That open switch. Because when they see it open, they can't see the direction of the current flow. When a closed switch is closed, it's actually touching like that. But they drew it like this. When I've asked students over the many years, I want you to draw a circuit. I want you to draw one master switch with two timer switches after that. The first timer switch, I want to control two light bulbs in series. And you should see that people have lines like this. I'm going to come in, I got a one master timer switch, a timer switch. Then I got two other switches. Controlling one light bulb in series and one light bulb in parallel. Is that drawn correctly? No. What's, what's going on here? This isn't connected to anything. What that should have looked like was like this. Come here, come down, and then it goes up to here, or down to here, to those two lights. And even there, it's hard for people to see it. That switch could touch the top one and go this way, or touch the bottom one and go that way. But when people see this, with that all that open space, they're like, I don't get it. Now, it's one thing for you to look at it and see it, but if I asked you to draw it, Sometimes people have made it look like what I had just before. And so, yes? No, I was just going to ask. So that's a single pole double throw? That is correct. Okay. Okay. Could I have put two separate timer switches? Because I didn't specify when I gave the instructions. I said two switches, right? Mm -hmm. I could have done this also. Could I, have, could I have come here, put a switch like that, and then come here and put another switch like that? Yeah, because they still connected. Right, that they're running through the same line, yeah. But this is not a single pole double throw switch. No, this is two single pole double single throw switches. Oh, yeah, single pole single throw. Single pole single throw. Yeah, single pole, pole single throw. Pole. The pole is the part that the switch yes. swings on. But a single pole double throw like this, this is the pole. These two are the throws. So this or this could do the difference but we have to draw it this way or that way because that is one switch with two contacts inside. Let's go, let's go here real quick before I, before I move on. Would that be similar to like a motor? What a motor does from start to... Uh, yeah, but I mean we have... Um, to run? Hold on one second. We talked about these switches before, and these are switches you can find on many appliances, microwaves, or whatever. I see if they had one with a drawing on it. I had one once before. Um, let's just look at the, at the pins. So if you look at this switch, it only has two pins, but what does it say there? Can you read it? No. Okay, so... What if I did this? Okay, we can read it. Single, single, single pole, single throw. throw. Single pole, single throw contact, but what does it say there? So if I put my meter lead on here and here to test it, will I get a reading now or no? Yes. yes. Why? Because it's closed. Normally closed means right now, if I take that switch and set it on the table, mm -hmm. the contacts will be closed inside and I'll get a reading. Because they're touching. What is this one here? Uh, uh, sorry, um, 
maybe maybe here. This one here says what? Normally open. Normally open. Normally open. So if I take it out and put it on the table, will I get a reading? No. 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 Okay. So it won't get a reading until I press down on the button. Right. What happens to this one when I press down on the button? It, it opens. It opens the switch back up. Mm -hmm. Now this one here, wait a minute. I had a different, let me go back. One second. So what about this top one? Single pole, double throw. Single pole, double throw. So here, you notice the silver one is the pole. Is that a common? So it's either going to touch this one or that one. Okay. So one of them is going to be closed, one's going to be open. And yes, you are correct. That other one was the common. Okay. Okay, so you understand the switches yeah. and how they work? Well, I do. Everybody good? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let me just erase this. I think I can do this. Delete. Where's my delete button? Oh wow, that took everything. I didn't want to do that. Let's start over here. So we went in black, line one. We went in to door switch. Black. Black coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Black on both sides. Mm -hmm. So that's something you need to identify. What if it's a single pole double throw switch? What's so important about that? A single pole double throw. It, because it has the option of being able to, to have the normally open or normally closed. That is correct. Now the other thing that what I was trying to get at mm -hmm. is I said black and black. Doesn't matter which black is on which pin on no. that switch. No, if it's only got two terminals on the switch, it doesn't matter either way. But if it's a single pole double throw switch where you can go down, make connection here and not touch that one, or go up, make connection here and not touch that one, which is what that switch is doing, and you got three wires, does it matter where those three wires go? Well, not really, but well, yeah, because you have common, you because you're gonna have you're gonna have line one, line two, and common, right? Well, if I have a single pole well, double throw switch here and here, I, I drew it wrong. Let me let me redo it. Not good at drawing today, guys. I'm gonna have to retire early. So I got my two switches. Mm -hmm. One of them is gonna be line one, right? Yes. Which one's line one? Which one will be line one? I'll put, I'll put line one here. Okay. And I'll put blue, and I'll put black here. Well, line one comes in, it'll go out blue, whatever blue is, light bulb or motor, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if this switch goes down here, line one doesn't go to anything. Nothing's going to work, is it? The line one has to be on it the common. It has to be on that, that, that So common. it could go out this one or out oh, that one. Right. So on a switch with just two terminals, it really doesn't matter where which wire goes on which pin. But if we have a switch that has multiple <coughs> pins, we not only have to know what wires are on that switch, but we also have to know what pin that wire connects to. Because if we don't connect those wires properly, we could have a short or something's not going to work if we don't put the power in the right place. Got it? Oops, I went too far. Okay, so after the black, we went what? To the board, right? P1? We went into the board here, black wire. <coughs> so we're going to go here, and I'll put P1, and now we're into the board. Now, what you would normally see is the board like that. We're coming out what? P3. P3, P3 what? 3, 3. P3-3, and again, P3-3 means plug number three on the board, the third wire in that plug. That plug could have five wires, one, two, three. That third wire would be that wire coming off, off that board, okay? Now, you may see it drawn like that, where this is just showing the control board, not just put board. 
and they're not showing no relay there. You're gonna have to assume the relay's there, but really what's going on is on the board there's a relay switch with a little coil in there. There may be more on the board, but we don't need all of them if we're just testing that circuit. That circuit yeah. We only need to know what relay is sending power to that part. And so what's the next thing off of P33? The, the float switch. The float switch. Okay. Now, what color are we using? Pink. 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 And then we go to a float switch, which is like this. Now, that float switch has a circle, so that when the water comes in, like in a water level switch on a washing machine, it looks like that. It comes right. off the bottom. Right. So when water comes in, air gets trapped in there and raises it up. What would happen to the switch when it goes up? It opens. It's going to open, and then by opening, what does it do? It closes the circuit. All that, well, it so closes? It, it, it opens the circuit, which stops the voltage from getting to the water valve. The water valve. So from there, we go to the water valve. And then from the water valve, where do we go? The door switch. To another door switch. Yeah, another door switch. So this is white here, and then white here, and then this is neutral, right? Right. So that is the strip circuit for the water valve. And again, as repeating, what is this strip circuit doing for me? How is it going to help or benefit me when I'm working on this machine? Easy to diagnose. To diagnose. It is to see what components are controlling that water valve. So if the water valve don't work, and I'm saying, Okay, water valve don't work. I'm gonna change the water valve. But it still don't work. Changing the part is not what you're supposed to do. What kind of test would you make if you were going on this machine and it wasn't filling with water? What kind of test I would take? Now you hear other things working, so we know that the machine has power. We know it got power. But no water's coming in. No water's coming in. Check the flow switch. Well, How would you just you just go randomly to the float switch? I'm just there's no, nothing wrong well, with it. Well, 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 having that the um being that you said the water is not filling up. Mm -hmm. Now I had a guy had a dishwasher not filling. He changed the water valve. It didn't fix it. Mm -hmm. Another guy went out there and says, well, the float switch itself somehow came out of the bracket, was just hanging by the wires. Wow. It's not that the switch was bad, but the float was no longer pressing down on it. It was just hanging right. there by the wires. Mm -hmm. So you have to check what? What what comes from here to here? Oh, voltage. Voltage. Mm -hmm. And how would we test it? What okay, we see the circuit. Mm -hmm. What's the first test I would make? <clears throat> Put my leads to line one and neutral or check the terminal blocks or check the voltage coming in. But the machine's the running. Okay, the machine's running. So I can do a voltage check on the water valve to make sure it's getting this 120 volts. So I would take a meter and put one meter lead here, one meter lead here, and my meter would read the voltage? Yes. Which does that voltage all the time? Does it have voltage all the time? No. So when does it have voltage? When it when when it's open. I mean when it's closed. Yeah, when it's closed. When it when it's. So you'd have to look at the timer chart and find out what time. And guess what? There's only some small spots in that chart right. where the water valve is actually energized. Mm -hmm. And if it's a computer board, how do you know when you're in that one spot when it's a your meter says zero volts is going to that valve, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You got a control board, not a timer where a dial is turning, so you really don't know where in the cycle is that board, mm -hmm. and so you don't know when the board's actually sending the voltage to the valve. We go by time frame and look on the chart, but what else could we do to make things easier? Check to make voltage, that test. Check, I mean, check, um, check at the board for um, neutral and the P33. Okay, but you're but you're saying checking neutral here and P33, but oh, but, you, but 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 wait, what, I, what I'm getting no, at no. though is like I don't know when the board's supposed to be sending voltage. So right now 
I may be in a wash cycle or a drain cycle and not oh, a fill. Okay, 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 okay. And so. I got my voltmeter. The voltmeter's gonna tell me, hey, you got no voltage. And you're like, oh, the board's bad, or the, or the float switch is bad because I have no voltage. So what about a, um, a water service test? The water service test, very good. We talked about that the other day. Mm -hmm. The water service test, and I don't know if I had this on, on, on the board. Um, one second, let me open up my Acrobat. I think I had the diagram in, uh, in here, didn't I? Just to explain the water okay. service test one more time, just in layman's. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up as okay. soon as as soon as I get it on the screen here. One second. Give me one second to find that water that wiring diagram again. It's right here, refrigerator dishwasher. It for some reason it didn't even save as a file. Oh, you know what? I know what that is. Let me look here. Which one of these is the dishwasher? Let me pause this first. Okay, so going to the water service test, that's what this is. And basically the water service test is a built-in diagnostic cycle for that dishwasher. So like I said, if you wanted to wait for this machine to fill, to fill, and I'll, I'll go like this bigger just so you can see it on the chart here. When you first turn it on, the water valve's energized within the first minute or two of the cycle. So if you started in a different portion of the cycle, or you let the machine run a minute or so, it's no longer sending power to the water valve. It's only sending it for one and a half minutes. And you don't know if you're actually in that cycle. So if you don't have voltage, you have to know Okay, I'm in a cycle where I know that control board is asking that water valve to fill. So if we looked at that water service test here, the water service test while in power failure mode, in other words, you unplug it, plug it back in, make sure that the board's not lit up. Okay, so once it's in the power failure mode, simultaneously press the options and start cancel. So on the control board, you're going to press two buttons. That's going to be, here, I'll just get it on the computer here, that you're going to press these two buttons, options, and start cancel, and you're going to hold them. And if you see the instructions here, that you press and hit them, the options start cancel for one second. The dishwasher will then step through the test cycle. So you press those two and you're in diagnostics. And at that point, it should light up and it should start going through these steps. The first step that it's going to do is do what? It's yeah. gonna fill and the detergent dispenser is gonna energize for how long? 60 seconds. After one minute, it's going to advance to the next step and it's gonna fill again for another 27 seconds. So you got a minute and a half. So what you do is you take your voltmeter you go down to the water valve, you find the two power wires that go to that valve, and you set your meter in the back of those wires or alligator clip them so your hands are free. Okay. Then you go into the step, and you already got the meter sitting on the ground. Do I have voltage? Yeah, I have voltage. Have no water coming in. Okay, ma'am, you need a water valve. But we do want to check to make sure the water's turned on underneath the sink first before we yeah. cancel out the water yeah, valve. No, but I've, I've had times guys change water valves and said it's still not filling. They didn't check the water. But you have a minute and a half and you know the water valve's on, the water valve's on. If I want to check the heater, I have to wait till step six. Okay? What does that say right there? The last sentence. Ah, so if I wanted to check the wash motor or the heater, I can press it two times, and I'll skip this one, skip this one, and go right here where the motor or the heater will be energized, because if the heater's not working, I can go right to that step. And that's what diagnostic cycles do for us as technicians. When we go up to a machine, we can look at a circuit, we can see what parts are in that circuit, what we have to test to make that part work, but we don't know if the board is sending power at that time or there's something else broken in the circuit. 
So we have to know that we're in that step before we can determine whether the problem is the part or the board's not sending power to that part. That's what diagnostics does because back in the day we had a mechanical timer. We could advance it to spin like a washing machine fill. We can make it drain. We can make it go to even the direct drive washer. I showed you guys there's a spot on the mechanical timer direct drive washer that will actually make it agitate without water. Yeah. That's a, that's a mechanical machine with a diagnostic cycle built in. Why did they do that? So that you will test it, the, um, it'll, it'll help you to be able to um, better diagnose the machine instead of having to go through the steps. Yeah, because if you wanted to see if the machine agitated, mm -hmm. what would you have to wait for? You have to wait, wait for it to, to fill up. up. Yeah. Yeah. Because the machine doesn't wash until it fills up. So there's one step in the timer. If you turn it, it will agitate without water mm -hmm. in the whole dial. Just one step in that whole cycle. Okay. So that is there for you to make a test. And the advantage of that on a direct drive washer is the drain pump is attached to the main motor in the washing machine. And so it's a transmission on the other side. So it'll agitate. So if that main motor don't run, it won't agitate. But think about it. If it don't run, it won't drain either. So could you imagine going to someone's house and you say, oh, I want to see if it washes. I turn the cycle, turn it on, and it fills up with 20 gallons of water mm -hmm. and the motor's not running. Mm -hmm. So now you have to take the machine apart to test it. But guess what? The motor's not running. I can't drain that water out with that motor either. So the diagnostic cycle allows me to see if it agitates that telling me, hey, at least the motor's running, I might be safe. I always tell people, if you don't know what's wrong with the machine, turn it on, make sure the motor works before you fill it up. Or dishwasher, make sure the drain works before you fill the water. The first test I would wanna do is not this one, I wanna be down here in step seven and see if I hear the drain pump run. Because Man, imagine you go there, the drain pump's bad, but you just filled the dishwasher up full of water. You'd be all day mopping, right? Yeah, I could suck all that water up out of there. That was a little inside joke. But all you guys know what it's like yeah. to be mopping up that water when your machine's yeah. leaking. But that's what this is. And a lot of machines have diagnostics. Um, on that, uh, our Voxer channel for TMM, one of our guys, Durham, he's really really smart guy and hopefully he'll watch this to see it. I give him props um, that he says today on, on, on the app he says I don't know why you guys when you run a service call if you got the model number that you don't try to see if you got the diagnostics and read and understand how to get in diagnostics so when you're at the customer's house you're already just hitting buttons and doing instead of going to their house Looking for the tech data sheet and say, oh, okay, hold on a second, man. Okay, the first thing I do is I press these, this, that button and this button, and then I do this. Okay, hold on a second. And you're pressing the buttons, and it still ain't working. Like, man, I, did, I thought I did it right. Oh, I'm supposed to press only for one second. You know, right. you want to read this, and you want to know this before you go to the house. If you can download the diagram and get the tech data before you go to someone's house, do that. That'll save you time when you're in the home and you're looking all over the machine for the diagram and you can't find it. And now you're trying to troubleshoot it. Okay, so let's go back to our, our, our tech sheet. So you guys, uh, no, that wasn't the one. Oh, you know what I did? I should be in this one. Oh my goodness, you know what just happened? I, oh, oh, here it is. It wasn't there a second ago. Okay, so you guys all clear with this as far as the circuit? All right, so we need to go into the water service test mode. And it, I don't know why they call it water service because basically it tests all the electrical components. This is that circuit in a straight line. And it's easier for you to see what components all control that valve. Looking at that diagram, the question I have for you is how many controls does it take to turn on that water valve? 
Four. One door switch, the control board, the float switch, and another door switch. Yes, both door switches are physically on the same part, but they're two separate contacts. One can still be bad and one can still be good. But I have four parts that if the valve is good, that could prevent power from getting to the valve, correct? But then we said yesterday, if other parts in the machine work, like the motor or stuff like that, I can rule out what parts. The motor? Now if I said the, the, the wash motor and the drain motor are running, I'm in the service test. You know the door switches are working. The door switches are good. So then I can say, well, my door switch is not part of my problem. Mm -hmm. Now I only have two switches and a water valve to test. I've just narrowed down what I have to do to diagnose a problem. You got that? We ready to move on to the next circuit? Okay, next circuit is the drain motor. We come into the door switch, we go through a relay, come out the drain motor, and go here and back. So we got line one, black, door switch, Black, and hold on a second. I'm gonna put neutral, and then I'm gonna put another door switch here. And then I'm gonna stop right there for a second. You know why? Because for every one of these diagrams, every single one of those parts go through the, that portion of the circuit. Right. So why am I gonna kill myself and draw it over and over again? So I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna paste it on the other diagrams because I don't have to redo that one over and over again, right? I go here, I go here, and control V. This is gonna be the next part. I go here, control V. So that saves me some time, right? So now we got the drain motor coming up of here. We went to what? P1, right? Yeah. So right here we have P1. And then we're in the board. We got a relay on the board. And coming off the board is what? P3, 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 P3
So if I was saying, well, which one is pin four? Do I count from this way and go this way, or do I count from this way and go that way? Yes, we count right to left, but if I'm looking at the physical plug, mm -hmm. I'd either look, okay, well, I got a red wire on this end and a yellow on that one, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna start with the red wire and count one, two, three, four. Right. Or I could look at what? The color of the wire. The color of the wires and say red, yellow, uh, red, pink, violet, blue, uh, black, yellow, yellow, whatever. And then I could look at that plug and see all the colors of the wires going to that plug and say, yeah, that's the plug I'm looking for. I can't see the P3, but I can look at the plug and see what color those wires are going to that plug. And I know that's P3 because guess what? P2, yes, it has red, white, and black, just, just like the same similar colors, but this is only a six pin plug. Because both of these are pin two, but there's only six pins. There's no more P2s there. So that's a smaller plug than this one, right? Mm -hmm. This pin, 10 pin plug's a bigger plug than a six pin plug. Yeah. So again, this is what we need to look for. And this is how we use those numbers to know where we are on these computer boards when we're testing. Does that make sense? Any questions on this? Pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. So, if I was going to do the pump motor, the drain motor drains the water, the pump motor is also known as what? The drain pump, I mean, mm -hmm. well. Well, we already got a drain motor here, what would this one be? Would that be a circulation pump? Circulation or wash pump or motor. Or wash pump or motor. Either or, it, it could be called either one of those. Okay. But if I was to add that circuit, watch, I could just do this, right? Right? Yeah. So then just to make things simple, I change that P34 to a P35, and I change this from drain motor to pump, and I'm done. It's the same circuit, isn't it? Basically, except for the motor itself and where it comes off the board. That was simple, right? So again, this is, this is also pattern recognition. Because if you can register like how components are wired to make other parts work, you'll find that all manufacturers, they may put their pump in a different configuration and make, maybe make the pump motor a little different. But a lot of the other parts in the circuit are the same. If I go from Whirlpool to Frigidaire to GE, they're all going to have door switches. They're all going to have a computer board. They're all going to have drain pump. Well, they don't all have drain pumps. Like GE has a drain solenoid on something. They don't drain pump. But they all have very similar circuitry. So once you understand one, most of them are the same. Now, there are some different things. But when you're working on these machines, and I have you do washing machines, and we got 10 different washers you got to tear apart. At one point, it becomes monotonous. Like, look, I've already taken five apart. I've got to take another one apart. Well, because some manufacturers do some slight different things than the other manufacturer. And if you don't work on it, you may be taking it apart like it's a Whirlpool, but it's a GE, and they do things differently. And then you might not know how to take it apart. So that's why we do that in here. Okay? So the next component is basically the heater, right? It's the only one left. So can I just, can someone come up here and just erase the few things we need to erase and add that heater circuit into the same circuit that I have there? Like just make the changes we need to make on this so it's the heating element instead of the pump motor. I'm not gonna draw it for you up there. I need, I need someone to give it a try. Oops, I didn't want that. Give it a try. So what would you erase? Right now you're on the eraser, so erase whatever you want to erase. Um, and we're doing the... We're doing that. You could draw that circuit if you want here. Just go ahead and draw it. Add a switch. Very good. Down. Over. Up. Yeah, you go, you go up there and then come right back down to where it says new. Okay, 
So here's the eraser. What's different on this circuit compared to that circuit here? That is the uh, two voltage, the two ring. Yeah. You come out. What are you trying to do? Just follow the line? Well, there needs to be another. Oh, no, this one's just right there already. Right? So we don't have any other return switch. So. Okay, gotcha. Uh, what's the difference, though? Will be the high limit. So that should be okay. So erase what you want to erase. You erase the pump because we don't have a pump, right? Now we do go through the board, right? We Are we coming out P three five? No, it's going to be going out to P eight. P eight. Okay, so erase that and change it. So if you want to draw, just hit the little pen here, and then the erasers right below. So that's point okay there. That's P eight. And then coming off P eight, where does it go? P8 is going to go up to the high limit yeah, limit set. So try to draw that right there and leave room for your heater. To do the water valve going through your board on P1 and coming okay. on P3. Uh, okay. Okay. And that's it. Yep. So that little bit right here, that little bit is all he changed from the pump motor or from the drain motor. Same thing he did that way, he just did that way. This is the only thing that changed in that circuit for the heater is these two parts. We used a relay on a board, we used the doors, a different relay, P1 to P8, right. not P1 to P35 or P34 or whatever. But everything else is the same. <clears throat> yep. So learn to look at these circuitry patterns on these machines when you're working on them. Any questions? No? You guys gonna survive the test tomorrow? I hope so.